company is all around septic. Um, appreciate you guys inviting me today. Give you a little information on what I do and what you guys are going to be looking at when you're selling or buying a house with septic on. Um, front page has got my information on it, uh, email. Um, I also allow our website allows online scheduling or so. You can do schedule requests, ask for visits. Um, what does an inspection entail? How, I mean, I don't know how much you guys know about septic systems or if you've been involved in septic systems at all. Okay. Uh, we'll get to the different types of systems that we have. Basically, an inspection is, does the tank hold water? Or effluent, so to speak, whatever is in it, is it staying in the tank? Uh, we don't want it leaking out made and designed for every time you flush, a gallon goes in, a gallon's pushed out the other side. In that medium, it gets clean. The drain field, where it's going to, whether it's pressurized or gravity, is where the last component of cleaning happens. Sand and dirt is still the best cleaner that there is in the world. Um, it goes out, it sits down through, bugs come in, eat what's there, and it's is the water table is clean. That's what we're looking for is to make sure all those components happen. Um, repairs can be made, things get old. Uh, a tank is concrete, some of the older ones are all concrete baffles. There can be a concrete tube uh, in the ground. It could be a 50 gallon drum. It, I mean, we've seen it all. As long as it holds water, it goes from point A to point B, and the method that is Created and it doesn't come up and end up in a stream, it will do its job. Uh, the baffles, in case you don't recognize, we'll start off with my excuse my artwork. You got a house, you flush, it goes out towards the tank. The tank's gonna be buried up to three feet in the ground. Just because you don't see it somewhere doesn't mean that it's not. Um, I look for dead spots that make sense on, based on where the house is. There's little hints that there. We can flush a locator and find the tank. It doesn't, just because it's not on, a, on an ass builder over there, it doesn't mean we can't find or we can't do something. Most tanks these days are two compartment. As our lives have changed, mom's not at home on a farmhouse, it's constantly doing a little bit of dishes, kids are all playing, never come back in the house. Dad got up and went out in the car. There was a constant flow of water. These days, we all get up at once. We slam a lot of water at a system, mix it all up, and we go away. We come home, we slam a lot of water at the system, taking showers, doing dishes, eating dinner, always say, you know, getting the kids ready for school the next day, doing laundry. And so, as the water comes in, it's forced into this area and gets stirred up. We put the second compartment in, with two teeth, they're called baffles. Those baffles keep that iceberg, or the floaties, in place in that first compartment. As the bugs eat, a layer of sludge develops. It's just the natural of what's going on in that tank. So that's what gets stirred up and a current goes. We do a second side so that when it comes, when this clear layer like, works through, it comes back in and settles back out, has that second stage to settle out. It's just, it, it helps keep this. This is a cheap section of our system. Every five to 10 years, or even 20 years on some of these older farmhouses, depending on how many people, is when this gets pumped. $500 over that period of time, even compared to city sewer, is quite a deal. The drain fields are where things get expensive. So we want to keep everything in here. So there's usually a baffle, or will always be a baffle, on this side. That baffle, the liquid level will always be at that point. It's on, is, this section is gravity. Is that stirring up done with each flush? Is that how it gets stirred up? Or is there a little bit, yes. Each shower, it comes in, um, and it, it comes in. There's no there's mechanical stirring. Stir no mechanical stirring at all in, in this form of section. On others, there's specialty systems that we do, will not add a stirring component or an air component to the mix to change what we're doing and the strength of the effluent that's out there. 
from here on a gravity system, we'll call this a curve, the gravity system will just be a set of heights. So again, every gallon goes in, the gallon goes out. You hear the wedding stories, the wedding horror stories of flooded fields when the cat, you know, uh, and still a movie where the cat played with the toilet and it floods the, floods the yard because they didn't wiggle the handle right. <laughs> that's what it can happen. Um, that's one of the only few drawbacks of a gravity system. It's mechanically sound, it goes out, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to have a control panel, everything does its job. There's no good, better, best. Drain fields and septic systems are designed on the ground. So every piece of property, the ground is going to take water at a certain rate. We have specialty outs on Chuckana where there is no dirt. And so we have specialty systems. We have Ferndale where there's nothing but clay and the water doesn't go anywhere. You start having specialty systems because if this liquid just comes and hits the clay layer, it doesn't go anywhere and it just will fail in a quick hurry. Gravity. Next ones are you take your gravity system add a pump chamber. This pump chamber will be the same depth, but in it will be a, a pump of some form to mechanically get this clear liquid, hopefully after everything works through, clear liquid out to somewhere else, whether it's uphill or whether it's just a far distance where they found on a field that's got a lot of wetlands or a spot that will take everything the best that it will be. So now we're just mechanically pushing it somewhere. It doesn't change, we're not mixing it up still. It's just a liquid level that gravity feeds out. And we've got a control panel that will tell it when to, when to feed that drain field. So you no longer have those wedding horror stories, but you can get a nuisance alarm. It doesn't make any electricity or at all to, to run these. They're not energy hogs or anything, but the nuisance alarms aren't panic mode. I, my system's failing. It's just, okay, there's possibly too much water or there's something possibly going going wrong that needs to be fixed, a pump, a float, something that tells it what's going on. Um, so how does, uh, actually the bugs and whatnot, uh, in that chamber, how does the, like things like toilet paper and other stuff get taken care of? So everything in this tank biologically comes from us. Okay. Um, all the bacteria that's in there, the bugs that are in there are all from us internally. They'll eat anything that's out there over a period of time. So when you flush, it's forced down the bugs, the floating slope, the toilet paper, a little bit of grease. We'll try and float up to the bottom. The bugs will start eating. As they die, as they live their life cycle, and then when they eat, it settles out as a sludge. Um, over a period of time, a family of four, that's five to seven years, approximately, on when this would get up. As those two components get bigger, the clear layer gets narrower current gets a little faster, just like a screen it sweeps a little bit over. Cheap section still. We want to keep it in this, and that's where the five to seven years or 33% of the tank. For you guys, that is selling and buying, just because somebody's moving, it, it's, it doesn't mean that they're literally going to take all their shit with them when they go. If it's, when I do an inspection, I measure these tops and bottoms. If it doesn't meet the criteria of time to be pumped, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't need to be pumped. The state says that's just where it's at. Sometimes buyers want to have that discussion, well, I'd like to have a clean tank or what's going on, but you know, I don't want to pay for someone else. So that's a discussion between you guys and the negotiation, but it's, I will put down on my inspection reports what the levels are and do I recommend is it time to be there. Um, I also, on a gravity system, I take into perspective, okay, I got to plan on three years out because that's the next time someone's probably going to dig this tank up is in three years or if they have possibly have an issue. So what are those levels at? Does it make sense to have to dig it up again or will it make, will it continue to grow at its constant rate and be three years will be just fine? Um, so if on a single compartment tank, I erred to the side of caution because now we don't have that secondary section to take care of that. <clears throat> um, part of having a timer and a control panel 
is there's timer settings. A three bedroom house is rated at 300, the drain field is rated at 360 gallons a day. The tanks can be anything. They can be, like I said, 55 gallon drum side by side. It can be a 900 gallon single. It can be a 1500 gallon tank. Typically it'll be a 900 to 1000 gallon tank for a three bedroom. Doesn't affect it. Bathrooms don't affect it. It's all based on bedrooms. Three bedroom, six people times 60 gallons a day is the average use 360 gallons is why they designed this drain field in mass and length to be able to take. The control panel is just a digital way of sending only 360 gallons a day. So if you got 50 people over for the Super Bowl, if everybody flushes the toilet and you do lots of dishes, you're gonna get a nuisance alarm possibly because it's hanging on and it's only gonna feed that 360 gallons. And you override that or you just say okay no? You, I push it, silence the button. Red light will normally stay on saying, hey, don't forget about me, but conserve water for 24 hours. When the alarm goes off in this tank, there's typically still 200 gallons of water per room, say a thousand gallon tank. If it, the alarm goes off when it gets to here, there's still all this room above the tank. That's not gonna cause any damage. Every inch in that tank, in a thousand gallon tank, 23 gallons. So a flush is a gallon and a half. So when the alarm goes and man, hey, I just bought this out. Don't panic. Don't be doing taking doing loads of laundry. Maybe just hold off on the dishes for a day. But give it 24 hours to see if, if it catches if the light goes on. Because even in a thousand gallon tank at 360 gallons, it's gonna lower this over 10 inches. And so that should get it back on your even with the flush if you have to flush 20 times to raise it in. So you mentioned clay. Uh, you have to go special to things where you have to pump. So if it's all clay, where do you pump it to? Or do you have to dig in and create your so own they, field? So there's a couple different ways. You see a lot of these houses in the front yard. You got a mound. So the clay layer is possibly here. Nowhere, gravity system's not gonna get three feet of separation before it gets clean because you need probably three feet of sand for a liquid to run through and clean. So we create three feet by doing a mound and up here. Now we're gonna pump basically up here and we'll put the drain field in the top of the mound. Oh. And we'll feed it at a certain rate so it only goes in the mound at a certain speed. So you don't dig down into the clay at all? Some, they'll dig it sometimes a little bit, but if it's clay, unless you can get clear through the bottom of it, yeah. it's, we're gonna create it above it. If it's even worse, you now have one of the specialty systems where you've got a mound and you've got like three of them or four, depending on how many bedrooms you have. In this mound, there'll be a bathtub. These are Glendon's. One of the specialty that work amazing in Washington County because they work, you can set them on the pavement, build it. It's a drain field in reverse, self-contained. The sand that's mounted on the outside is your three feet of vertical separation but you feed that bathtub, the liquid works its way up through it, the drain field in reverse from top from bottom to top instead of top to bottom, and then overflows that bathtub equally and runs down and then the side and evaporates and it's clean before it hits the pavement. So you'll see all these different systems and you're wondering, well, why did they put this in the front yard? Well, most of the time it's the only spot on the property that was dry enough or could take liquid and they try to put them wherever they can or it'll be back on the back 40 acres and these pumps, depending on where they are, will pump a mile. You know, pump 30, 40 feet uphill, not chucking up 30, away from the water to a spot that's, that's clean. Um, during the inspection, checking levels, making sure the pump and floats are working right, the control panels, making sure the timer settings are right, we're feeding at a certain rate. I do a draw down the pump, make sure that it's by measuring how much liquid leaves, I know how many gallons in a minute it's pumping out. I do the math on 360, 360 gallons a day. If it drops 46 inches, I do the math on how fast the pump, how what those timer settings can be. Um, anything with a pump, and even a lot of gravities have a filter in place. We clean them, there's a hundred different filters. The only requirement I have is if it doesn't plug up, it's not worth having because it's not doing anything. Eventually, I'll filter the plug, they're making clean, purely, as part of my service as doing it.
inspection or an operations maintenance. And it's quick and easy, but it, yeah, it's keeping things in the another step of keeping everything in the cheap seats. <laughs> Pumps get expensive, start plugging them up with solids. They, that does Train feels again really expensive. Four to five hundred dollars every few years or five to ten years. Between five hundred and a thousand dollars for a new pump. If when those go bad, between ten and thirty thousand or fifty thousand dollars for a new drain field. So, so if the filter's not getting clogged, then that's doing a really good job. Well, or it's that filter's not doing a very good job. Oh. Because no matter what, the bugs are going to sit on there and they're going to eat and die and create a slime and they're going to eventually plug up. Really healthy people eat lots of whole grains, lots of fruits and seeds. Our bodies don't use them; they stay suspended. You'll find those in the in the filters because they tend to not settle out as quick, and it takes longer to inject, which is why we pass them through. Um, it's any filter is going to do a, a better job than nothing. Um, I will try to recommend, but I understand people are always who are selling houses. Don't necessarily want to put any money into it. The filter is only thirty-five bucks or so. You know, it's not. You know, it's not my responsibility. I'm, I'm leaving. It's. It's not required at this point in time. Newer systems, they're all required, but things are grandfathered in. It's a suggestion that I make to help the likelihood of the system over the long haul. Um, I put dye, whether gravity or a pump, is a biodegradable fluorescent dye. I put in the system so that when it pumps, I can see that it gets from point A to point B, and I don't want to see it come up anywhere on the surface of the ground, in a stream, a pond, or in a lake, and out on 10 Mile Road into the ditches. A lot of those farmhouses are right up on the ditches. We've had some issues with. You know why I put that dye in? Well, so we go over here, we don't see that. You know, there's that sort of thing. Um, sometimes you don't realize where the drain field is, and they dig away and put a garden or something, and we end up with a cut bank and some liquid will come out. Well, it's always what they're looking for. That's why I use dye even on a rainy day. You can see the red or the blue or the green dye come up too in there. Doesn't mean it's a failure. We can look and see what's there. We may just need to put their back in place so that it's, it goes down instead of making the path least resistant. A lot of these, the deer will make a mess out of them. Uh, running over the top, you can't stop them. You can put fences up and things, but again, a lot of these front yards or um, if you're on Cane Lake and back there, so you got all these deer trails. Just because they knock down all the sand and it, it can be reshaped and, and fixed, it's not, a, it's not a ruined system because the deer and the dogs and other things have been done and the kids have been playing with the sand. Don't know any, any better. There's not exposed to anything, it's just they can. They can get messed up a little bit, but they can be fixed. Um, What's the difference between a filter and a baffle? The filter goes in the baffle. A baffle is a T. Some of them are concrete. They're cast onto the tank, and they just go down a certain way in the tank, about a foot, so that just the clear liquids will hopefully come up. Um, some of them are a four inch T. Again, it's, it's three or four inch pipe going out of the tank, T baffle, so just liquid level will head out. Into that T, we can slide in a filter. Um, and there's all, there's, like I said, there's 101 different ones on the market, and they're all, as long as they sort and sift, that's what we want. Now, why do they use a T instead of an elbow? Because I'm assuming one end you of that T is solid. C. Um, it helps. It, they used to do a lot. A lot of the old systems or the older systems were done with 90s. Uh -huh. um, but you couldn't see necessarily is there a problem with the liquid going out of the drain or is there just a something plugged right on that 90? Well, so the teeth from going down from the top. Of so the top. you're looking, you, you, you got that big thing. You got a, you got a T like, it's like this, your wall. Got another D. Again, yeah. Sorry about this. Oh, so you can looking down from so the top. So the top lid will have a usually a 24 inch or 20 inch um, configuration. Sometimes there'll be um, on the lid there'll only be one big lid, 
and a couple of small six inch lids that look down into the top of ah. these. So I can see where this liquid level is because it should be right here at the bottom because when it goes out, it's gonna be, we slide a filter down in here so that hopefully just this liquid comes up, works its way up through the filter and then out of the tank. So in the event, let's say the bottom of that T got plugged for some reason, eventually it would fill up this, and it'd spill over the top. And that's in- And go into the next tank. Go into the next tank. So that's why you wouldn't want to do an elbow because, because of the plugs at the bottom. A lot of these, you know, you can't, there's some of these older ones have an elbow here. Right. So now when I look in, I can't tell if it's plugged on gotcha. the outside okay. or I'm fixing one right now on Mosquito Lake where it's an old tank. So it's cast iron and it is an elbow. Well, that cast iron over the last 20 years has rusted shut. So her level looked way up in the tank and we couldn't figure out why they thought they were having a failing drain field and she's trying to sell the house. So I dug up out here, opened up the pipe and it was a dry pipe. I know there's an issue somewhere. Mm -hmm. This side, mm -hmm. we found a cast iron pipe. So I end up taking a big, large bar and knocking it out of the way and I'm going to be installing a new baffle in place so that we can actually see in it and deal with this section of there. Filters save pumps. Um, sometimes they went to, instead of a filter here, they put the pump in a basket, a filtered basket. Works just as well. A little harder to clean. I got to take the pump out a lot of times. Over. Do they ever use the macerating pumps? In, that, in, in houses? No, in, uh, in that house. So, Sometimes yes, but hopefully just liquid on this arrangement, everything is solid, it's, it's in this compartment, only liquid's gonna be here, so we don't need to pay the extra money for a macerating pump. So again, we don't want any solids or any stuff out here in the drain field. We want it here. Okay. Now, on the configuration that this house is way down on the bottom of the hill, and they were able to put a gravity system in, we may use a lift station with a macerating pump to pump from down here up to the, the tank. Uh, so I was doing open house once and they asked me what kind of septic system, what are the names for the different kinds? So basic, is that in here? There's, on the last page uh, there's there's some there. There's basic being gravity, a gallon goes in, a gallon goes out. And that's kind of the, the picture that I've got. Um, typical system is pressure distribution which is instead of just the gravity drain field, we put one with smaller pipes and we're feeding it. Right, the pump is pressurized, it feeds the, feeds the drain field at a certain rate. Again, they design it to be a certain size for the number of bedrooms. They do the math in their head of how they want to load it based on how the ground takes the water. And it, it's just on a timer. Those ones you won't see as much, you'll sometimes see three inch, some cats at the end of the field where flush and make sure the lines work. Mounds, a lot of the mounds are also a pressure distribution just raised because we couldn't, we didn't have that separation between where the water is going out of the pipe to the water table or to the clay or to the bedrock. Glendons are a specialty system. The drain field is contained in each one of these bathtubs. Um, they'll either be in a long one based on it or they'll be one of these tubs for every bedroom. So you'll see two, two tubs, three, four, or you'll see very long, big ones with, with a cap. Um, Glendons are great also because they have the digital readouts I plug in a controller into and it tells me the history of what's gone on with the system. So they get an alarm and I look in the system and it says, well, you, did you use 400 gallons in between the hours of 2 a.m. and 4 a.m.? Well, no, 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 wait. Okay, we probably have a sticky toilet. Sticky toilet, if you know, it'll fill back the toilet in 30, 40 seconds. 30, 40 seconds, a gallon and a half. We'll fill a thousand gallon tank in a couple hours. Especially ones, Glendon's. The next ones are, we have a septic tank, then we have what's called an ATU, aerator. We were talking about mixing. These, for whatever reason, we're close to water, we're close to uh, shellfish or things that we really want to clean or change what's going into the ground, the strength of what's going into the ground. So now we're gonna take part of this tank and we're gonna introduce air and we're gonna stir it up. And we're gonna, that's gonna, the bugs that eat that are usually gonna cut down the nitrogen levels and things and bring the system down even farther to a different component. So we usually have gravity components still where 
wants to do their job, goes into another tank with an aerator, um, and it's basically an air pump. Sometimes they have a mixer on them, sometimes it just bubbles down and, and works up. Um, they, it's just another way of breaking down the system by introducing a different form of bacteria that's out there. A lot of times after that, there'll be some form of a disinfectant, whether it's a leech tablets or a UV light, because unfortunately, the bugs that like air that we're introducing and stirring up aren't necessarily the best things for the environment, and we want to kill those off before we send it into the drain field to do that last component. Um, again, they're not one extra step. It's each designer will design a system to fit the property that they own. And there's not one that's, again, better than the other. It's just what can we do to make sure that this liquid that comes out of these pipes at the end is going into the water table as clean as possible. So a curiosity from the standpoint of the gravity fed systems and the specialty ones, what's the cost difference between those? A little more different every year. See a three bedroom. A uh, three bedroom system on a basis, you know, could be ten to $12,000 for a drain field. Um, I'm, I don't know what designers are charging to design what's out there, but there's not, a, they're, they're digging a trench, they're putting it in, depending on if it's just right. an open field. That same field, if it's not, it's, now we gotta add another tank, a couple thousand dollars for a tank, a pump. Um, a controller, we gotta have an electrician now. Those are, you know, there's a few extra costs, but it will do, you can use a house on a piece of property that you wouldn't normally necessarily get away with a gravity system. Blendings can be in that $25,000 to $50,000 range. Um, that's what we're saying, we wanna keep everything, if you've got an existing gravity system or even a pump, we wanna keep it here. It's getting harder and harder to get gravity systems because they keep finding more and more problems. Okay, how can we protect the groundwater? Um, part of the reason a lot of notices are going out right now is because we just had the well moratorium come off and now it's going back to court. What is the state doing to protect the waterways? And I think the health department all of a sudden saw what are we actually doing to really show that we're protecting the waterways and the orcas and those things and how, how can we make sure that we're doing enough that it, they don't come back after us as a statewide or as a county representative. So in the Glendon systems where you have the tubs, I'm still at a loss at the end of that process. Where's the water? Does it evaporate? It's, so it's fed in by a pump down in the bottom. So you drain rock, pea gravel, sand, and then this is sand on the outside. It's called, micro, they do this in microdosing. Every time it pumps it, pumps every 10 to 12 minutes, depending on what the designer does, to get that 360 gallons out. Each one of these tubs is really only gonna get three and a half quarts of water to overflow that tank. Oh. And so it goes down, and as it works over, it pushes a little bit out. Well, three quarts over a, a bathtub that's eight foot long by four foot wide, there's not a whole lot of water coming out of the top okay. of that. On a hot day, the evaporation will actually lower the level in this tank almost a foot because it's actually pulling that water, wicking that water out, and evaporating it, and cleaning it, because if it's evaporating, it's turning the steam, there's nothing in that that's going anywhere that's got anything in it. We still got that three feet of sand that it's in route that it's coming out and working its way through to get down to wherever it's at. And so that's, that's it's a self-contained drain field that's yeah. in place. Um, there's some new ones out called Oscar Low Flow. So they, there's a lot of drip systems that were basically irrigation. We had to have miles of all these lines out in the front yard and, and that to work with. They cut it down to coils where he's figured out how to make a coil that's three feet in diameter, have that same surface area of liquid going into the system that the long trench lines would, and you only have to have six inches of sand underneath it and on top of it. A little couple more tanks are a little bigger for the settling. They do a little different things, but it's just another option that you can now, you don't have to dig a big, huge mounds in your front yard. You can actually put it into this system and then backfill up to the sides so your yard's all the same same height and it doesn't affect the, the overall situation of how the system works. So the Glendon, the liquid comes, it's pumped, there's pressure to it's, the Glendon. It's pumped to this tank and the, 
just like gravity, it, it goes down to the bottom. So, so it pushes it through a pipe to the bottom, and then it flows up through the sand, and, and then it spills out over the top correct. into the surrounding yeah. sand area, the exterior yes. sand area. So there's no lid on that no tank, lid. it's just a pipe that's pushing the water into, all the way to the bottom. Yep. Into a bath. Okay, I never that never sunk in before. That's cool. That sunk in. Spending. And so, yeah, that's why the pipes stick up a little bit so that when it goes in, when you look into that, the water level in that tank will be where the size of the bathtub are. So, have you done much work and uh, issues out of the Birch Bay area? Uh, I've done lots of it. So that one road that goes along Birch Bay that's headed towards Birch Bay Village. Okay. Yeah. I call that sewer lane because it smells like septic stuff. Is that what's happening there? No, that's, that's actually the just that's just the the low sewer. tide, um, really? the, the bacteria and the bugs doing their job out there with shellfish and, and fish and, and water. Um, same form of natural, same form of a thing where a certain amount of stuff's washed up. The bugs are doing their job, creates gas and smell and and that. Okay. All these things, the reason they don't stink or smell or shouldn't. Is everything is vented out through the plumbing of the house. That's why you have the feed traps on your sinks, is so that there's that, that water base to right. keep the smells from coming out. These will actually vent out the tops of our houses and that. Have you seen the new design feed traps? I have. Do you know what a whoopee cushion is? Yeah. Okay, you know that they take that and put it in vinyl and they get rid of the P traps. It's a straight shot at an angle down. And it's got that whoopee cushion thing so the water goes in, but as soon as it's out, it closes. They can't come back come up. Come back in. Yeah. The it freezing. Would, oh, it's pretty cool. That would be that's yeah. a moving part. No moving part. It's just a it's just a vinyl um, piece of tubing. Just measure tubing vinyl and flatten it. And flex and it. go out here, but it's it's, so the water it's engaged no on the, the hole so the water can go through it. As soon as there's pressure that goes down, that tube inflates with the pressure of the water and it flows through it. As soon as the water's done, it flies back out like the tip of that whoopee cushion. It's flat. So nothing gotcha. can come back up this way. The, they're really popular in RVs now because they're huh. safe and freezing and, yeah, and you don't have that vent to come back to the smell back to the... So if I climb to the top of that mound for a Glendon, is there just an open tank that has water in it? Or what does it look like on the top? So the bathtub is really only going to come up to right about here. There's going to be sand on top. We There's sand on top. We, we put sand up a foot on the top. Okay. You, you may, it may, you can sometimes it'll settle a little bit, um, but there's hardly, there will hardly ever be any water or we need to pitch, pitch a little bit back up on top. Will, there, um, will, it, get, will it get wet? Will it be wet around the top? Is there will be lots of grass growing. What about rain? Rain doesn't affect it. Um, the standpipe will be like this. And so, and then the, say the top of the bathtub will be there. So the water level will always be here or a little lower in the bathtub. So when you look down the pipe, you can see it, put this sand on top. But it's solid because it's solid because it's full of sand and gravel. It's full of sand and gravel. And then there's and just water on it. And you can walk on it. And, yeah. and it's 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 solid. And right. Grass will grow. You can grow ivy on it. We just don't want trees. Blackberries are even fine on mounds. And, so you could put a Glendon system on a asphalt slab, and, and it would it just would, it would just water would just kind of trickle at the bottom out, yeah. in a worst case scenario. Huh. Clean water. Wow. Yes. So if someone has a house that's like three bedroom, their septic's rated for three bedroom, they want to do an add-on for an extra bedroom, and they need, do they have to redesign the entire they, septic? They would need to contact a designer to redesign or to see field. how big of a drain field addition they would need. Sometimes they'll add a leg on uh, Glendon's. They'll just add another pod if they feel that there's room in that area. It's, it's a toss-up on what their property will take. Um, along those lines on a three bedroom house, they can add as many bathrooms as they want because it's it's rated at six people. If you've got six people in the house, there's only six of us on the toilets at any given time. <laughs> it's it's not you're not using any more water. Um, you know, the empty toilets aren't going anywhere, they're right. they're just there. So people who want to do a cool house with a bathroom, you know, it's not for just because I've got the kids so, that want to come inside. So just okay. Along the lines you're talking about, I'm building a house and I want to, I tell you, home. But I want to make sure that I have some room to grow. Can I get it designed for four, four bedrooms and so even those three seconds add on later? If it, yeah, if, if a, you can ask for a design for a four bedroom and if you're in a 
and there's room on your property to get a four bedroom drain field in place, then you can have that. Do you know if there's a rule of thumb for per bedroom? I need so many square feet of. It's all, it's based on how does the ground take the water. Okay. That's where the designer goes out and he takes a test hole. Got he it. sees how it percolates and how it takes the water. That's what he bases on how big of a drain field will be. If it's a one to one basis, basis on it takes water, then it's the 360, you know, approximately 360 square feet of space. Cool. Or however. This is awesome. Thanks for doing this. Thing. Who uh, who defines what constitutes as a bedroom in this equation? What's on the uh, assessor site? So if it's listed on the assessor site when it was originally designed okay. as three bedrooms, okay. someone's added on and say gotcha. three bedrooms. I'm only able to test it as a three bedroom subject. Okay. If the original design, if that's what the design says, no matter what someone else is done or added on or ordinance I'm permitted or not. Um, I can only I can only address what's on the original permit. If there's not an original permit, I go off of what is the assessor site say. Got it. That it was that okay. it was listed as. Um, we caught some arguments, but <laughs> it's, you know, this sure. is what it's listed as. Yeah. If no. you want to call yeah. us it, it you know that this but this is yeah. If they want it if a buyer wants to say well it's only rated at this and that's all I then you know that, that cost or bedrooms or, or debt yeah. doesn't really pertain anymore. So on the mounds, back to mound systems, I've heard of a mound system. If the mound system is or a pressurized mound, so if a mound system is below grade, lower than the house and lower than the tank, that's just gonna be a gravity mound, right? So if there's a pump involved, it can it can pump, say it's pumping down from here and we're that our drain field's out at the road and it's lower than its production, it will still be pressurized and fed at a constant rate. We will put a vacuum release in the install part of it so that it doesn't suction out. Ah. Once we pump, it won't create a suction. A siphon, a siphon thing, so we'll anti-siphon. Yeah. Okay. There'll be a hole drilled in the side of the pipe to release ah. um, that pressure so it doesn't, um, there'll be Backflow preventers for if we're pumping uphill, so all the liquid that's going uphill in the pipe doesn't come back into the tank. It stays gotcha. in the pipe on its way. So it's uh, the the tank or the uh, mound is either pressurized by water pressure through gravity, or it's pressurized through a pump if it has to go uphill. So there but there's are, pressure being pushed you, into that mound. You've been out on Baker Highway, yeah. and you see all the big, huge, large dead areas in people's front yards that look they're 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 called non-pressurized mounds for a while and even now they were, it's a gravity system. They just built a mound in place, again, high water people, we built a mound. But they actually put in two drain fields. Hmm. And that's where they do it, but it is a, it's a non-pressurized mound. So it's gravity fed, it can be pumped to gravity. It's still a gravity system. If it's a four inch pipe in the ground in the drain field, it's gravity. If it's one inch or two inch pipe with small holes that we're feeding at a constant rate, because it, as it sprays out, it feeds that drain field all at once. We're not relying on the installer to get everything balanced in a straight line. Um, those, that's those, those are the yeah the two differences. Okay, so I've got a house under contract. It has a septic system. There's a septic addendum that we use. It says the seller's responsible for hiring a guy like you to come out and do a inspection of the septic system. So you go out there as a Whatcom County Health Department approved septic inspector, and you're approved to fill out the OSS, you know, yeah. inspection form. Um, and you go, can you describe what you do during that inspection? I will, yes. I come on site, I, if it's a gravity system, I'm gonna look for where the tank is. If there's green risers or caps, I'll open up the lids, and make sure that the lid, the risers are in good shape, that they're gonna hold water, keep water, extra water from getting in the tank as much as possible. Um, we're gonna look at the baffles, see what the levels are, make sure that the levels in there are where they should be, operating level, oops, operating level. Um, and then test the drain field. I'm gonna put in half the daily use. So a three bedroom house is 360 gallons a day is what it's rated as. I'm gonna give it a little stress test at 180 gallons. So I'll fill a bucket 
time how long it takes to fill that bucket. So a five gallon bucket, if it takes 30 seconds, it's 10 gallons a minute. So I'll run the test for 18 minutes with dye. Make sure the water doesn't back up in the tank and uh, it doesn't come up anywhere in the drain field. Now, how will you run that test again? How is that? How are you applying the bucket? I will take a garden hose yeah. and I will fill a five gallon bucket. Okay. That's the time how long it takes to fill that bucket. So if a five gallon bucket fills in 30 seconds, that's 10 gallons a minute. That's how you know what you know your pressure I, is. I just know my pressure, yeah. Okay. My pressure of what the car, garden hose is. If it okay. takes a minute, okay. then it's only five gallons, and I'm going to run it for 36 or you know, instead of 18 minutes, I'm going to run it for 36 minutes to get that. So you, you, then you compute that and then you run that yes, garden, run hose, garden hose, into hose into the tank. Into, into the tank. Okay. Into the side of the tank, into the bath, and, and make sure that it goes to where it needs to go to. Okay. On a pump system, I'm going to measure where the water level is, run the pump for a minute, measure the level, and do the math on how many gallons pumped out. And then compare that to the original settings on the, or the as built, um, what they originally designed it as. Okay, this is rated at, if it goes two inches, that's on a thousand gallon tank, that's 46 gallons that was pumped out in a minute. I do the math, okay, this was rated say 360 gallons, and they want it pumped six times a day, it's gonna pump 60 gallons. So I'm gonna set it for a minute and a half approximately. Make sure that the time of sentence match from one point A to point B. I'll also test and flush these lines. These should come to the surface. Some older houses don't. It's okay. It's grandfathered in. But if they come to the surface, I open the caps, I turn the pump on, and I flush out any debris that is developed in, in these oh. holes. Um, a pressurized system is typically just a one inch pipe, and there'll be three sixteenths, eighth inch, quarter, any number of holes in the bottom. So when it pressurizes, it, it sprays down into the drain rod and feeds the bed all at once. Small holes can get plugged, a little, a little bit of leftover effluent or water in the bottom, and you can develop a slime just as I do. So when these pipes are brought like this to the surface with a cap, I take the cap off from the pump and it flushes that goo out of the tank or out of the line. Called a clean out too, Called right? Clean out. That's, yes. that's what a clean out is. Um, okay. I will also, the asthma will tell me how big these holes are. I will put a cap on it with the same size hole on the end and measure how high it squirts up in the air. Every pressurized system in the county has written down what was the original squirt height. Squirt height. Oh. Oh. If this squirt height is half what it was originally designed at, I've got a broken pipe somewhere. Say the drawdown was at first two inches, and now I've got four to five inches, but I've only got a squirt height of, instead of being, say, 24, I've got 12 or less, I've got a break somewhere that I need to find. And that's on the pressurized system. That's on the pressurized pump system. system. Yeah. It wouldn't if do that on gravity. If it's twice as high, say it's measured at two feet, I'm squirting four to six feet, that means this is now the path of least resistance. All these holes are plugged. Doesn't mean it's a failure. I can put a jet, I have a machine pressurized hose with uh, water jets on it that I can clean out these these holes and, and make it so that it's it's a useful system again. So just because it fails the OSS on the first just go because it's a maintenance does, item. Doesn't Failing mean you can't come out to fix fail, it. Yeah. Either there's no liquid in the tank liquid's coming out on the ground somewhere, surfacing where it shouldn't. Um, or, and we had the case where it wasn't quite surfacing, but it wasn't what was designed on, on property. Uh, those are the things that are, are mainly failures. It's, it's liquid coming to the surface and being out on the ground where it should not be. Um, that's the biggest, the biggest failure. This sort of thing is just hard on pumps. When these holes plug, now that pump has to work that much harder to try and pump the liquid out because now it's kind of hitting a brick wall. Whereas pumps out, but we can alleviate that. Broken pipes doesn't necessarily mean a failure because it can still be in the drain field area um, or may never come to the surface. We may stick a camera in it and try and find where that break is or take it and look for the bright green spot in somebody's yard and even though it's not coming to the surface, we possibility that it's there and make a test hole and see what we can find. Um, 
that's that's what we're looking for. Is is my main goal is to make sure that all the liquid comes from the house, goes where it's supposed to, and goes into the ground. Yeah. Some of these older farmhouses, um, for most inspections, I don't need to be in the house at all. I never go in the house. I may on some older houses, uh, farmhouses and stuff, have to flush the toilet to make sure it comes point A to point B. I don't run the kitchen sink because a lot of the older farmhouses had gray water systems. Only the toilets went to the septic tanks. Mm. Then they had a grease trap or a gray water system somewhere. That's going to run the sink. If I don't see it come here, I get to go looking for a grease trap and then test it according to almost the same standards. Just and normally, on some of those, they didn't know they had them. And so those grease traps probably needed to be pumped or taken care of just like a septic system. So the as builds that you mentioned, are those available on the health department website? They are available on the health department website. You guys, on the assessor site, there's a property ID or the 12-digit long line. You, you, parcel you, number. Parcel yeah. number. You can go to the Whatcom County Health Department, accessing water and OSS records, plug in one of those numbers, and it'll bring up every inspection. And every well, if there's an as build, there will be an as build there. Cool. Um, uh, my turnaround on house sales, I try to make 24 hours based on payment. Uh, based on what? Payment. Uh, a lot of times, people who are, who are selling their house, if payment isn't and there's house sales, they tend to forget that they need to pay someone for the inspection that was done so their house can sell. Um, so I usually send out an invoice. I use QuickBooks, send out invoices online. I carry a square, I can do credit cards on the spot, checks, et cetera, et cetera. And then send, I would send these out to whoever needs them as much as possible. If you guys want one immediately, same thing, I'll send it out um, as soon as I receive payment. A lot of times I'll send them out to you guys because if things are in escrow, then that's fine. I just let me know and we'll make those arrangements and make sure you get the, get the permits in, in time to pour it out the front of it. OSS in yeah. time for to make everybody happy and sales go smoothly. So if there's an OSS, you do, you fill out the form and like, wow, system failed or needs repairs. Are you now required to submit that right back to the health department and they get a copy of it or how does that work? Every homeowner is different. Sometimes they'll have me out early on in the process because they don't know if their system quite working as right. We can, failures, yes. If it's a failure, I've got a report. If I got sewage pounding out on the, on the surface, if I just have a broken pipe and it's not, yeah. you know, we've got something that we can repair and make the system right, we can make the system right sometime and, and document it. This was a maintenance item that was needed and we fixed it. If it's pounding out, the health department can also know about it and sometimes it can be fixed just because it's a failure doesn't mean it's done and we're finished with it. It may be something that we the health department says, so, okay, we'll fix this, we'll remediate, make sure the ground, we haven't made any hazardous areas, um, too bad that we have to remove it or, or replace it. Um, tanks with holes or breaks in the bottom, you know, I fill them up, wait 24 hours, say I'll be back in 24 hours to see if it holds water. If it doesn't, it's, it's, a, it's considered a failure, but it can be just a tank replacement. I will normally, on that situation, still run a flow test to make sure that if see if the drain field is viable. The drain field is viable. Now we're just doing a tank replacement permit, and they're much cheaper than doing drain fields. Can you patch a tank? Sometimes they corrode around the baffles. Um, houses that older houses aren't don't bend properly. Sometimes this concrete corrodes around the baffle yeah. uh, from the tank. Those I can fix with an epoxy and a jet okay. set and work on, um, make sure that it's sealed up good around there. Um, things down here, no. it, it's, yeah. we have to worry about intake and outtake of yeah. water coming into the system and it's impossible to do, do right and, and or guarantee. Yeah. So uh, I, I just, it yeah. doesn't make any sense for me to, to do, but something that's just in the surface that I can patch inside and out on the sidewall that's not too far down, that is something I can do. Um, risers that are added on will sometimes leak um, on rainy days pouring in water. Those can be repaired or we get a new lid that will just have one recast by police and sometimes it's 
cheaper than me doing a aid repair on just trying to fix risers. Cool. Um, for a deal with these huge water table flexes in the clay, they will actually move those risers as the ground shrinks in, and I, it's easier to have them cast in place and read on that way than to. But there's, most things don't, maintenance items are maintenance. They, they can be fixed and taken care of and done. Uh, sometimes a float will be bad or an alarm won't be working. It doesn't mean it's a failure, it just means we need to, we need to get it taken care of. Cool. What are your, uh, as we were working with sellers, maybe prior to listing a property, or we're actually in a deal, and uh, what are your advice, what's your advice for homeowners like sellers and the realtors? Are there any pet peeves that realtors do that bug you, or what could the seller do to set himself up for success? Any advice you'd have along those lines? Um, sellers, if they think they've got a problem, or they think that it, it, they're worried about it a little bit, don't wait till the, the last day and yeah. expect it to happen immediately. Yeah. Um, I try to be able to leave room on a schedule to do the inspection and make sure it gets right. Leave a spot for repairs, but sometimes those start stacking up and then we've got to move out. People are like, oh, I need this done today. It's, it's possibly not going to happen. Sometimes I can replace the clothes with float on the fly or, you know, fix a baffle that's broken off and some of the old concrete will deteriorate and I can install. But it's, if you think there's a possible issue, don't wait till the last minute. To, Head, head in the sand and wait. Um, things that the um, same thing with, with realtors is, is you know I understand sometimes the sales coming out through we'll work with as best we can in getting you everything that I can get you and making sure that we don't we're not making promises that are unrealistic um, especially if we do come up with a maintenance item it doesn't mean that you know realtors don't want to hear well there's something that needs to be fixed it, it could be anything it doesn't mean that it's astronomical and it's going to affect the sale or it shouldn't affect the sale it, it's just something that the repair that can be made um, and i'll be honest on this is what i can do or this is where i think we're at and i can i but i won't sign off on on anything that's going to affect my license or my livelihood right. and i'm just like now, are you a sole owner or do you have other people working with you? I'm a sole owner. My son has been working with me right now because we've been really busy and keeps him out of trouble to use yeah. a life skill and use a shovel. Um, What's the average price range? Which, what should a seller expect to have to pay for an inspection? I charge $250 for an inspection. That's it? That's, well, that's that's the inspection. Um, it's, pumpings are typically, like for a thousand gallon tank, 500 yeah. And tax um, repairs, it's it's anywhere. Um, broken pipes or you know, the gravity system, you know, a baffle, there's an hourly fee, and uh -huh. just the cost of materials. Uh, pumps can be, like I said, anywhere from three fifty to two thousand, depending on what they're doing mm -hmm. and how far they're going. Um, things get a little exciting at that point because people are trying to sell and do things. Floats are you know an hour late or sixty five dollars a piece, depending on what's going on. So generally speaking, how long does it take to perform the inspection? An inspection lasts about an hour. About an hour. And then basically you need them to have some kind of an outdoor spigot with a garden hose available for that's you? Usually, that's my, if they have an idea where their tank is, and if it's only about six inches down, I'll do the digging as part of, you know, part of what we've got going on. If it's one to two feet, I will charge an hourly charge on, on the digging. <laughs> that's a lot of digging. Um, some, you know, sometimes six inches to a foot in Linden is topsoil and, and easy digging. Four inches to eight inches in, up on the mountain, I'm using a pickaxe and, and a bar to work through the rock because I can't get a shovel in. It. Wow. Those, those, those and days. you know where that tank is because of the as -builds. I have a good idea of where, yeah. it, where it is. Um, sometimes places like the Glen right now, we're doing hundreds of inspections up there. The as bills or Xerox copies, all exactly the same for every lot. They're not there. Um, they can be anywhere from if I'm underneath your trailer and I've got to be doing digging up to, you know, then there is definitely going to be a charge. Um, we're doing a lot of that right now. And that ground's not soft. Um, but, you know, if they know where it's at and they want to do, they want to do the digging, that's great. I will also, if it's 
deep, recommend risers, especially to may not be something they can bargain for, or especially to new owners that that's there. I have no problem with uh, buyers being there, sellers being there, it doesn't matter to me either one, one way. The more people know about the system, the more those are gonna take care of it, recognize when things aren't quite right. Same thing with you guys. If you guys wanna be there and see what I'm doing and, and ask lots of questions, it's I'm more than willing to do it. So, uh, again, the more you guys know, or you can recognize when you go to a seller's house, well, we should probably have that checked. So, you know, that doesn't quite look right out there. Mm. Most of our drain fields in Whatcom County, especially this time of year, are the big dead area in your field mm. over in your um, Why is that? It's a drain field. The liquid goes in and it's meant to drain away. If the liquid's coming in and it's not draining, it has to come to the surface and we're fertilizing the grass to a bright green area. We are starting to have a possible issue. Doesn't mean it's a failure. Doesn't mean it's necessarily a maintenance item. It could be just low amount of dirt on it and, and it's there. Sometimes you'll see one where it's a, a, like a green circle around the drain field. It's the difference. Sometimes they were sand bedded and so it go into the rock and as it's draining away, it's wicking up that sand faster or the hard top hmm. of the original ground and sticks up that to the sides. It's if I low out, it's bright green. It's this much taller than all the surrounding grass. <laughs> you got and problems. It looks like dew on yeah. it still because it's so much. <laughs> now we're now we're gonna have okay. This is gonna have to be addressed. And I'm, I'm not so that's kind of a myth because the myth is oh the, the grass is always greener over, over the septic tank yeah. no. <laughs> because that means you got a problem. <laughs> um, yeah, people want us water for sales. Short watering cycles again. Topsoil is only going to be about this, yeah. you know, or there's going to be sand up and only usually a couple inches of the topsoil. Just wet the topsoil. We don't want to, yeah. any other water is just going to be a waste of your water. Just wet that, wet that topsoil. Septic tanks also tend to die off. We've got a chemical reaction here, bugs doing their job, creating heat. They're usually close to the surface. We're baking it from the top. We're, you know, we're baking it from both sides. So those tend to die off. So I was at a, a listing out in Camino Island, and it was a beach house, and in the front yard there was, oh, about this big of a round container, and there's like three of them. Is that something? Probably. Um, the old, called well tiles. They were an old septic system. They used a three thirty-six inch diameter well tile, and they put a bottom in them. Most of the time we hope they put a bottom in them, in them and they just stack those, and then all the pipe one to another. Oh. Just like a, oh. a two compartment tank, they're just separated. Uh, sometimes there's three, for whatever reason, they chose to do a third one. Um, and it does, again, they work still. Um, as long as there's a bottom in, that we're not, that's great. As long as it's, that they're hard to work with. I even try and sell a, a lid, new lid with a riser in it, so I don't have to bring the kids to lift a 36 inch diameter concrete lid that's it's oh, taken weighs about 700 pounds. It's, um, it's, a, it's a fun day on your own. Yeah. Uh, but they, they can be done and we get creative with how, they, how to get into it. But yeah, there's, there's like, we've seen a Volkswagen being used as a septic. Um, it was Volkswagen. You know, Volkswagen. It was holding water and it was there. There was a sunroof that they were using as the lid. <laughs> That would be a great slide if you're doing a listing for oh, that. All the water, it's crazy. You know, and, and we, <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't fail it because it was actually at all the levels where, where wow. it needed to be. You oh, get, wow. You've, you've got, like I said, all kinds of different things. So the code doesn't stipulate what it has to be? Code is, a, it, we would like them to be. Of course. Now, but uh -huh. there's a lot of things. There's a lot of steel tanks still out there. You'd rather uh, have them be a toilet or just a Volkswagen tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's still steel tanks that hold water grates. A lot of the lids often go bad, and so we end up 